Think one drink won't matter on keto? What if I told you it can shut down fat burning for 72 hours and rewire your liver to store fat instead? Stick around. I'll show you exactly why alcohol and ketosis don't mix and how even moderate drinking hijacks your metabolism. Hi everyone, my name is Mark Bates. I'm a metabolic health coach and this is part of my highlights presentation series. Why one drink can destroy weeks of ketosis. Here's what happens inside your liver. You know that the liver treats alcohol like a biochemical emergency. When ethanol enters hepa he hepatocytes, that's liver sites, during ketosis, cellular machinery abandons fat burning and ketone production to prioritize detoxification because alcohol is a poison. This metabolic hijacking creates a cascade of disruptions that can halt therapeutic ketosis for days, not just hours. So there's a cellular traffic jam created here. Inside your liver cells, alcohol metabolism generates a massive surge of ND, NADH while depleting NAD+. These are two very important uh, compounds in your liver. This metabolic process in balance, this metabolic process and imbalance shuts down the pathways ketogenic dieters depend on. Now, beta oxidation of fatty acid stops. The citric acid cycle slows. That's the cycle that creates ATP in your mitochondria. Ketogenesis halts completely. Meanwhile, excess acetyl CoA from alcohol gets diverted into fat synthesis rather than ketone production. The liver essentially switches from fat burning mode to fat storage mode virtually instantaneously in real terms, right? Acetate from alcohol metabolism becomes a temporary brain fuel, but it's volatile and short-lived, and when it clears, the brain experiences an energy crash that manifests itself in anxiety, brain fog, and cravings, and boy, we've all had that at one point in our lives, typically. That's called a hangover. Okay. <laughs> so why ketogenic dieters get drunk faster? And yes, y you do. Glycogen normally buffers alcohol's effects, but ketogenic dieters maintain minimal glycogen stores in your liver and in your muscles. Without this buffer, alcohol tolerance drops dramatically. Research shows ketogenic dieters can experience blood alcohol levels five times higher than those on standard diets after consuming identical amounts. You ever wonder why some people just seem to get drunk faster than others, right? And especially if you're young, you notice that. Well, these people t probably were, without even realizing it, uh, in a very high state of ketosis most most of life. I had a really good friend who couldn't gain a pound, no matter how much he tried, uh, gain muscle. But he, you know, he was trying to. Uh, this guy would actually be drinking condensed milk straight from the can because he was because he was so skinny. He was trying to gain some weight. He didn't realize that he was in a state of ketosis all the time, and because uh, the way that's the way his body was built, and he would get drunk off of one beer, you know, after work, and it was just amazing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it it is there. You got to watch this. Women face additional vulnerabilities. Lower muscle mass means less glycogen storage. Fluctuating estrogen levels affect alcohol dehydrogenase activities. The result is faster intoxication and more severe metabolic disruption. Hormonal cycling compounds these effects. A glass of wine that feels manageable during one week of the menstrual cycle can trigger an anxiety and sleep disruption during another. And women, you know that better than anyone else how your hormonal cycle affects things, right? The recovery reality, right? Returning to ketosis after alcohol consumption can take far longer than most people realize. Ketone production typically requires 48 to 72 hours to fully resume after drinking. This timeline extends with repeated alcohol consumption. 
Chronic drinking creates lasting changes in the liver enzyme expression and mitochondrial function that blunt ketogenic responsiveness. The liver begins anticipating alcohol arrival, keeping detoxification pathways active even during sobriety. This metabolic anticipation delays the return to efficient fat burning and ketone production. Okay, the metabolic hierarchy. When, cl when clients of mine refuse complete abstinence, you know, and there are some who say, no, I have to drink a little bit. Okay, your beverage choice will does matter though here significantly for metabolic impact. Clear spirits, clear the least, cause the least disruption. Vodka, gin, and unflavored whiskey contain zero carbohydrates and minimal additives. So they still hot keto ketosis, but they allow faster recovery. Dry wines occupy the middle ground with one to four grams of carbohydrates per serving. The residual sugars and fermentation byproducts create moderate insulin responses. Beer and sweetened cocktails cause severe metabolic disruption. I mean, you're drinking sugar with beer and with sweetened drinks, right? Their high carbohydrate content triggers insulin spikes that can extend ketosis suppression for multiple days. So if you have to have a drink, be careful what you're drinking, right? Okay, debunking the friend's paradox. We've all heard about this thing. The cardiovascular benefits attributed to moderate alcohol consumption don't apply to metabolically compromised individuals using th therapeutic ketosis. Now, that's a key point here, okay? If you are metabolically healthy, you have no issues and you're in ketosis just, just as a natural part of your day, yeah, the occasional bit of alcohol is not going to hurt you. But if you're trying to heal, don't, you know, don't hijack your healing by taking a drink. If at all possible, avoid all alcohol when you're in a healing mode, okay? French populations with low cardiovascular disease rates consume minimal amounts of wine with meals. They don't drink like, like sieves, they, they, right? They, they have a little bit of wine with their meals, and that's fine for these people who are mostly metabolically healthy, right? They avoided processed foods and maintain insulin sensitivity, which is the key factor here. Most ketogenic dieters start from a position of metabolic dysfunction. The reason you got into eating a ketogenic, ketogenic diet is you were sick to begin with. Don't, don't hijack your, your healing. For insulin-resistant individuals trying to restore liver function, lose visceral fat, or stabilize neurotransmitters, alcohol acts as a metabolic obstacle rather than a health enhancer. Even moderate consumption raises triglycerides, reduces insulin sensitivity, and disrupts sleep quality in this population. And sleep's very important, so don't, don't mess with it. Okay. Yeah. Do not hijack your healing, right? So, as a metabolic coach, one of the things I always stri strive is check your biomarkers. Make sure you know where you're at. If you're still in a healing phase, and for most people, this can last several years, avoid alcohol if at all possible, right? I mean, I, I never have a problem. Uh, and by the way, you know, you, you can just get, if you're at a party, you can just get uh, mineral water. <laughs> it's bubbly. It looks like it's in a glass. It looks like a drink. No one's going to know. You don't have to drink, right? Okay, so understand. Understand everything I just said. Do not sabotage your healing for a drink. Okay, and, that, and that's all there is to that. Okay, so what's the verdict here? If you're in therapeutic ketosis, right? And that's the main thing. Are you in this to heal? Then alcohol offers no compelling health benefits. Whether addressing diabetes, cognitive decline, or metabolic dysfunction, alcohol consistently impedes progress. The liver's evolutionary priority system cannot be negotiated. When alcohol arrives, detoxification takes precedence over every other metabolic function. Clients using ketosis therapeutically must choose between social drinking and optimal healing. 
Both are valid choices, but only one accelerates your metabolic recover, recovery and the other hijacks it for days. Okay, For those committed to therapeutic outcomes, complete abstinence aligns with the precision required for metabolic restoration. Remember, we talk, more, we talk less about getting the, the correct macros and, and enhancing the signaling of your within your body and your hormone production and all that and alcohol just halts all that signaling helps all that hormone correct hormone production and all that a little bit of alcohol if you're metabolically healthy is not going to hurt you any amount of alcohol if you're in a healing mode it's just bad for your healing okay all right thanks for watching this, by the way, was a request. This was deep in my in my list of things I was going to cover. But somebody who's a friend of the channel said, "Hey, I, you know, what about social drinking? Do I have? Can I have a drink once in a while?" And so this is an answer to that question. Hope hope you liked it. Please comment. Please uh, provide any ideas of things you might also want. Cause like I said, I, it does influence what I put on up on the channel, right? This is a uh, community to help you I need to know what you want and then I can pr prioritize that information and as always if you haven't done so please like subscribe and share this video with someone who may need it thank you very much